Welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java, where it's our goal to help you increase your income and see that you are fully funded. I hope that uh, you are subscribed to this channel. If you haven't, I would appreciate you subscribing and uh, also sharing with your friends and making sure that uh, if you have questions, please submit those. And if you have questions, you can submit those in the comment section below. You can always go out to Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. And uh, as always, you can reach out to me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. Well, let's dive right into our next set of questions. Well, our first question today comes from Brian in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And Brian asks, are people in the U.S. still as generous as they always were? And what are some of the recent statistics or trends in the United States? Well, Brian, thank you for that question. I appreciate that. And I can definitely confirm that, uh, especially up to 2019, uh, and I'll share some numbers in just a minute, uh, the United States giving was up and up significantly, and we continue to see individuals have a very giving and generous heart. But surprisingly, we even saw that, and maybe not surprisingly to, uh, to many of you who watch my broadcast, we, uh, our organization and a lot of organizations that I know had very good years last year, even in the middle of a pandemic. This could have been a very, very troubling and challenging year for a lot of organizations. And it was for some. I don't want to at all diminish the fact that it may have been a very difficult year for your, your organization or an organization that you help but there are many, many, many organizations that did, did extremely well. Uh, our organization saw a uh, almost a double-digit increase in income. Our direct mail was up uh, about 47%, which could be attributed to the fact that people were kind of cooped up and locked in, and uh, some of the opportunities that we normally have to see people, they used that money and sent it in. But we also saw that some people decided to use stimulus checks and some other source of money. And uh, we also saw that those people who weren't able to give or actually gave less because of the troubling situation may have been uh, out of a job or displaced or furloughed. We really saw a lot of people make up for the difference in that. Some of the trends in the United States, using our most recent, most current data, which was the completed year 2019, total giving in the United States was $431 billion. Now that was an increase from the prior year. Um, giving from individuals was $309 billion. That was a increase from the prior year. Uh, foundation giving was $76 billion, and uh, that came from 86,000 foundations. That was a 2.5 increase in giving. And uh, as an example, foundations have increased their giving nine of the last 10 years in giving. The rest of the giving in the United States was bequests and by corporations. And so uh, the United States still sees very, very strong trends for giving. Uh, my prediction will be that we will have another very good year. Uh, oftentimes, we see that in troubling times, uh, in crisis situations, individuals step up and feel it's their, uh, their calling, their responsibility to step up and help others in need. And uh, I'm not uh, doubting one bit that we'll see that happen again this year. So, Brian, thank you so much for your question. I hope that helped you with some of the trends that we are seeing in the United States. And uh, I look forward to your next question. Our next question is from Dale in Washington, D.C. And Dale asks, what are some key principles to remember when approaching a foundation? Well, thank you, Dale. I appreciate that question. 
Uh, I always find that there are three key principles, key factors that are always important when approaching foundations. Number one, the first key principle is research. It is critical that you understand what the foundation, what their purpose is, what their mission, what their vision is, what they hope to accomplish. And with 86,000 foundations in the United States, there is no way you can reach every one of those foundations, nor should you reach every one of those foundations. You need to do your homework to find out, is their mission and vision similar to your mission and vision? If it's not, there's no reason to go to them. They will just reject you. Know that if there is some similarity or somewhere down the road you see an intersection between your mission, vision, and values and the foundation's mission and vision, make sure that you approach that foundation with a project and a program. That leads to our second key point, and that is relationships. Relationships are critical. For some reason, people make the mistake of treating foundations like corporations, almost like inhuman entities. But foundations are made up of very human, very generous individuals who, in most cases, set up the foundation to give to organizations and with the goal to make a difference in our world. And so it's important that you treat the principals or the gatekeepers of that foundation like you would any other individual with very unique uh, giftings, very unique skills, very unique feelings. Make sure that if you can begin to develop a relationship with a foundation representative to find out where the foundation's heart and passion is and if you are doing anything similar to where they're at, make sure that you submit a proposal to the foundation. The third area is that of persistence. Statistics have shown that an organization will get six rejections on average before their first grant from a foundation. Now, what that means is that you could give up immediately. And of course you should if your mission and vision is not at all similar. And in all likelihood, the foundation will tell you that it doesn't appear that we're anywhere on the same page. But if you're starting to develop a relationship and it seems the fit is in there, continue to stay with it. There's an old adage that says, get in line, stay in line, get to the head of the line. And it's important with foundations that you stay with them, that you continue to try and not give up if you're aligned with where they're at. Because in all reality, what we have found over the years is that many foundations just on principle will reject the first proposal they get from an organization. Now that could be a very valid and very needed project or program that needs to be funded. And just because of certain standards or principles or practices, that proposal will be rejected. Hang in there, stay in there. But what I'm not referring to is just blanketing 150 foundations with the generic proposal and hope one of them gives. I couldn't even give you hope that one of those would be accepted. Uh, I've just found that too many foundations uh, are, are getting thousands and thousands of proposals a year. And they can't look at every proposal and certainly are not going to look at ones that are not personalized and are not looking at what their mission and vision, what they're trying to accomplish is. So Dale, I hope that helped you with your question and uh, I hope that it uh, uh, allows you good, uh, much success with your, uh, your efforts with foundations because I know it's not easy. So hang in there, research relationships and persistence. So uh, hang in there with that. Well, that ends our next broadcast of Jim and Java. Once again, be sure to subscribe. Make sure that if you've got questions, go out to DevFStrats, use the hashtag Jim and Java, and also make sure that uh, you email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And of course, uh, drop a message down in the comments section if uh, any of the points or messages, anything I've mentioned during this broadcast, um, just uh, provoked a question in your mind or, or prompted that. So anyway, thank you again, once again, and uh, just know that it is our goal to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.